Who are you? Bond. James Bond. International cheat. International menace. Gentlemen! Goldfinger, why weren't we told the New York and the West Coast weren't on this? Goldfinger, I made a delivery. Where is my money? And you owe me one million bucks. Goldfinger, the man with a finger in every pie. His enemy, 007, the world's wiliest, toughest gentleman agent with a license to kill. 007, it spells... Bond, the hotter the danger, the cooler he takes it. I think you've made your point, Goldfinger. Thank you for the demonstration. Choose your next witticism carefully, Mr. Bond. It may be your last. social media lands welcome to an all new video so in this video we're going to be doing a review of my next James Bond film so this is the third film in the James Bond Eon series that I'll be going over and reviewing and we're going to get right into that but before we do that make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on this video or any of the other awesome videos I put up and as always people let's get right into this <music> So welcome one and all to an all new movie review people, oh yeah! So in this review, like I was mentioning before, we're going to be doing the next James Bond film in the Eon series. So of course that brings us to, like I said, the third film, which is entitled Goldfinger. Da -da -da -da. Goldfinger. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This hands down, is by far my favorite one so far. Now, I've only watched three, but I, you know, of the original series, uh, you know, I, I've seen, like, you know, the Daniel Craig films, and I've seen a couple of the, you know, Pierce Brosnan ones, but out of these first three Sean Connery films, this one by far is definitely my favorite. Now, Goldfinger came out in January 9th of 1965, was, of course, you know, filmed back in 1964, and it was released, actually, in 1964 over in Europe before it got released over here. But still, this is just a really well-done film. It was really well executed, and I really like the direction that the director took in this film. Now, this film is none other than directed by a gentleman named by Guy Hamilton. Oh yeah, Guy Hamilton. Woohoo! So Guy Hamilton, he's directed several films over the years. Uh, he just recently passed away in 2016. Uh, he actually has directed a few of the other James Bond films too as well. This was his first outing and he was a superb outing, most definitely. Now, with this film, Guy Hamilton, I thought, just did a really amazing job and really brought you know, what I was looking for in the first two previous films. Now, a couple films he's also directed that I actually have enjoyed watching before in the past and thought that just showed how good of a director he was is none other than a couple films. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is a Fred Ward film that came on the 80s. That is the first of actually a couple films that Fred Ward made as this character. And the film is called Remo. Unarmed and Dangerous. Oh, yeah. So this actually is its original title. It actually got another title later down the road, but I'm totally forgetting exactly what the other name was, but I believe it was like uh, Reno Williams, his first adventure or something like that it was like, but it, it was originally called Unarmed and Dangerous. Now, with this film, I thought Guy Hamilton did a really interesting and amazing job with this film. He made this film so fun with some great laughter, some great comedy, along with the action. Along the same lines as, like, say, films like The Rush Hours or, uh, like, you know, buddy cop films. Like, I would even say close to, like, Beverly Hills Cops and stuff like that. And I just thought that he did took that film in a really great direction and gave us this really great first outing of this character that Fred Ward so beautifully created. Now, the second film that Guy Hamilton directed that I've seen and thought was a really fun film. And that it just seems like a really well-rounded film too as well. That film happens to be a film called Battle of Britain. Oh yeah, the Battle of Britain. 
Ooh. So this is a World War II film that is actually based on a real uh, competition over in Europe back during World War II. And this is actually about that Pacific battle. And after watching it and then also kind of doing some research on it, this movie is actually very accurate to what really happened in World War II. Now this movie you can see was a, a bit different than any of his other films, you know, even though it still is about war and has action and stuff like that, it definitely had a very kind of dramatic element to it. So it kind of showed that Guy has a really great eye for what to direct when he's directing different types of genres. And I thought that he did a really good job of bringing that to life and giving us that picture-perfect accuracy, pretty much, to what it was really like during that battle over in Europe uh, back in World War II. And just all the acting in it was really well-directed, and just the screen uh, time that they gave certain, like, areas of Britain that the battle took place were really on point too as well. And I really appreciated that because it really showed a lot of the a lot of that great scenery of parts of Britain that I feel you don't see very often today. And it just, they were wonderful looking landscapes. So I was really impressed by that too. Now it comes to, like I was saying, with Goldfinger, this is picture perfect James Bond film to me. It was on point every inch of the way. He had the uh, most amazing timing for each of his scenes. Great action and choreography. Lots of great kind of like funny, like, you know, those silly 60 type of, you know, kind of characteristics they gave to certain films back in the time. There was a little comedy I felt involved with the characters, even though it was supposed to be more serious, but you could tell that he was trying to go for that kind of funny and uh, a little bit of that funniness to the scenes and so forth when it comes to the fighting and to certain scenes and so forth. But I thought everyone involved with how he directed them just made a really fantastic film. Really well done by Guy Hamilton and looking forward to checking out more of his James Bond films and other films that he's directed over the years. So this movie has a great all-star cast in it. And, I mean, this film just had a decent ensemble cast, too. And, of course, the return of, you know, James Bond himself, though, from the first two previous films as well, just made it, um, you know, fun and entertaining and just made it a really uh, well-adjusted film. Now, of course, to start off this amazing film cast, of course, is none other than, you know who, Mr. Sean Connery! Oh yeah! Sean Connery! That's not what your mother said last night, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, it still cracks me up. It, it still cracks me up. Uh, that, that impression was always so on point for Sean, and I hope he enjoyed it, you know, while Dara Hammond did that voice for him and stuff. But, but anyway, so this time around, a couple movies I really enjoyed with Sean Connery in it. We're not another couple films I don't think a lot of people talk about his performance in. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is actually based off Agatha Christie's novel that came out in the 70s and is a film called Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that he was actually part of that film, that huge ensemble cast that brought to life Ed Christie's story into such a beautiful detail and such a great, fantastic film. And I totally have forgotten that he was actually in it, and he played such a great kind of, like, English, sophisticated, Scottish type of character that just was on point in his characterization from the novel. And I just thought he did a really fantastic job of interacting with all the other actors and characters in the film, and just gave us a really interesting and fun performance that I don't think he gets enough credit for how fun of a performance it was. And just how well conceived of a performance it was. Because there, a lot of the scenes that he's involved in and his dialogue, I felt, was very uh, sophisticated. And I thought that it really brought a lot of great you know, light to the film and gave a really great you know, on-physical performance for that character from the book. Really enjoyable. If you haven't seen Murder on the Orient Express, uh, the original, definitely check it out for a Connery's performance. He was on point. Now, the second film I like to talk about that he was in that I don't think he gets enough credit for, and also is just a really amazing disaster film that came out in the 70s, or even early 80s, if I remember correctly. And that's the film called Meteor. Oh, yeah, Meteor. 
Oh my god, this is such a classic, amazing disaster film, like, along the lines of, like, Earthquake and, uh, like, disaster movies like Airport 1970, Airport 79, stuff like that, Airport Concord and stuff like that, and... This movie, I don't think, gets enough credit for how great of a performance I thought he gave as well. It's not a very well-mentioned film, I feel. I don't hear a lot of people, when they're talking about Connery, or even talking about disaster movies, they don't mention this film very often. And I think it's one of those films that should get so much more praise for how amazing of a disaster film it was. Especially for its time, because the visual effects in this movie were so on point for its time, too, as well. And I absolutely just loved Connery in the film, playing the character he plays, and just the difficulty he had to really have to uh, basically kind of lead the film with the other actors and actresses that were involved with this film. He really brought it to life and really, you know, helped accentuate all the other people that were a part of the cast in this film. Really great performance. If you haven't seen Meteor for his performance, definitely check it out, people. It's on point and fantastic and just a really fun performance. Now, it comes to, once again, playing James Bond. I thought this was his best outing yet. I loved his humor in it. I loved his acting all together throughout this film. I thought he was... He worked so well between, you know, Honor Blackman's character, Pussy Galore, to, you know, Goldfinger himself, and just how he interacted and just how he was a lot more action-packed in this film. It was so nice to see him actually be James Bond more. Because I felt the first two films, he really wasn't very action-y and not enough. Or definitely in Ru from Russia with Love, he definitely got a little more action, but this one was hands down lots of action, and that was amazing. I thought that his performance just went from here to all the way up to here with this James Bond performance. Definitely my favorite James Bond performance for him, uh, hands down so far. I can't wait to see him do more. So that brings me to the final person I'm going to be talking about in this amazing film. And that, of course, is Miss Pussy Galore herself, Miss Honor Blackman. Oh, yeah! Honor Blackman! Yeah, she was an amazing actress. Unfortunately, she passed away this year, too, back in April, which is crazy to think that two of the people from this film that were still alive just died within several months of each other. That's really sad. Uh, but she was a really uh, fun actress, I thought. I thought she did a really good job in pretty much anything she was in. Now, a couple films that she was in that I really enjoyed and thought were really fun films. It was none other than a great film that came out in the early 2000s starring Renee Zellweger, uh, Colin Firth, and Hugh Grant. And that, of course, is a film called Bridget Jones' Diary. Oh, yeah. This is a great rom-com film, and Otter Blackman actually plays kind of a main character in the film. And it's funny because, you know, watching that film back then before I saw Goldfinger, it's funny to see her so young in this versus the scene her at her age she was in Bridget Jones' Diary. And I just, I was having such a hard time putting the faces together. I'm like, wow, that's the same person? I'm like, really? I'm like, wow, I, I, I can't believe that's the same person because her acting and versatility from how she was in Goldfinger compared to, you know, Bridget Jones was so different. You can see how much more seasoned she was in Bridget Jones. And I just really enjoyed her character, and I loved how she played off of Renee Zellweger, and just how she brought a really great class to the film, and a really great performance. If you haven't seen Bridget Jones' Diary for Honor Blackman's performance, definitely check it out. It's a uh, on point. So that brings me to the second film Honor Blackman was in that I really enjoyed. Now, this film, I feel, doesn't get enough recognition, to for being such a great film. Because it was really state of the art for its time back in 1963. And it was, you know, kind of along the lines of Clash of the Titans, this film is. You know, with that claymation style that they used for it and everything. And, I mean, it was a huge testament to its time of how amazing and talented the people that worked on this film really were. And then, of course, the film called Jason and the Argonauts. Oh yeah, Jason the Argonauts. She actually plays Hera in this film, which she is spot on hit. Oh my goodness, she was so awesome as Hera. I loved her performance. I mean, I've seen you know a few, several films over the years that have been about Greek gods, and Honor Blackman's Hera performance was really on point in this film. I really enjoyed it, the overall appearance. I really enjoyed her overall presence of bringing to life the character, and also just giving us this really 
fantastic, you know, characterization that really worked well with all the other actors that were in the film that, you know, she was basically interacting with. And I just thought that she doesn't get enough recognition for such a great performance either. Because a lot of her dialogue in the film, I thought, once again, is not, was very sophisticated, very uh, well-written and very well-versed. And so when she put it into performance, it just came out, like, so fluid. And just so well done. I, I, it was just a really great performance, I thought. If you haven't seen Jason and the Argonauts, definitely give it a chance, people. It's worth the watch. It's an amazing film. And especially if you're a huge fan of the original Clash of Titans from 81, you'll really enjoy this, too. Because I thought it was very similar to that. Now, it comes to uh, Honor Blackland's performance as Pussy Clark, I thought she was decent. I thought she was a, you know decent Bond type of girl, you know, her love interest with James Bond throughout the film and stuff like that, and I thought she brought a really great, you know, interesting perspective to who Pussy Galore was. But anyways, but back to Honor's performance, I thought she did an amazing job. I thought she did a pretty decent job, and I thought that it's definitely one of the better Bond girl performances I've seen in the first three films. Uh, I thought she was fun. I definitely thought she had some good one-liners throughout the film, and uh, definitely, you know, interacted very well with Sean Connery. A really fun performance, and definitely worth checking out if you're an Honor Blackman fan. Uh, and definitely, if you're a James Bond fan, definitely check out Goldfinger. Such an amazing film. So if you're not familiar with what Goldfinger's about, basically this time around, the arch enemy of James Bond in this film is called Goldfinger, and he is trying to basically take the gold reserves in Fort Knox and radiate it so that it can't be used, so that he can have world domination. And it's up to James Bond to basically stop him and to save the world. And he ends up interacting with different characters and ends up, you know, uh, having the love interest of Pussy Galore throughout the film. So, I mean, this is, a, like I said, once again, a great, amazing film. I was really impressed with it. Really enjoyed it. My favorite James Bond film so far, the first three I've watched. I thought that everything about it, from the writing to the... Uh, the action to the even the cinematography even to the sets that were very hokey for the time because I understand it was 1964 when they filmed this you know they didn't have the technology like they do but still was amazingly done and fun and still kind of hilarious to watch because compared to watching stuff you know even newer than that like even 20 years down the road you're like wow CGI really wasn't used there yet you know and how CGI has really you know changed the game for a lot of the films but at the same time, this movie was just so well done. And I, like I said, Guy Hamilton really knocked it out of the park and gave us an amazing James Bond film. This one totally made me feel more like watching a James Bond film than the first two. It wasn't boring at all. I was I was on point wanting to watch it. I didn't want to veer my eyes off because I was enjoying it. Uh, this is just hands down a really amazing film. If you have not seen Goldfinger yet, definitely check it out. One of the best James Bond films I've seen so far. Uh, a giant 10 golden movie boxes up on this. Uh, everything about it was so well done. The scenery, uh, everything, and it was just really fun. I really enjoyed it. And even some of the like scenes where they're sipping on cocktails were really well done too and on point and seemed a lot more like James Bond as well. Uh, but like I said, if you haven't seen it, give it a roll, people. It's worth the watch. So that's it for this movie review, guys. Always thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Also, thank you for being a subscriber. And if it's your first time here, don't forget to check out any of the older and newer stuff I might put up as of recent. And also, check out my awesome links down below from anywhere from my Patreon page to the awesome horror pack. Now, my Patreon page has cool stuff like bloopers and and links to my merchandise and all that kind of stuff. So if that's something that interests you and you want to show support for a guy, hit check out that link down below. I really appreciate it. And as always, people, I will catch you in the next one.